Hello and welcome back to PsychEd. This video covers the Robbers Cave experiment, which was an experiment led by the social psychologist Mazafer Sharif and focused on asking questions about how conflicts between groups develop and how we can reduce them. The findings from Mazu Sharif's famous Robbers Cave study were a milestone for understanding intergroup conflict and informed later interventions to reduce racial conflict in the newly desegregated United States. Sharif tested two primary hypotheses. The first hypothesis was when individuals who don't know each other are brought together to interact in group activities in order to achieve common goals, they will produce a group structure with hierarchical statuses and roles within it. The second hypothesis was when two in-groups once formed are brought into a functional relationship under conditions of competition and group frustration, attitudes and appropriate hostile actions in relation to the out-group and its members will arise. These will be standardized and shared in varying degrees by group members. So the participants of the study consisted of 22 boys. These boys were unknown to each other and they all shared common characteristics. For instance, they were all from white middle class backgrounds, they were all Protestant and they all had two parents. So these 22 boys were divided by the researchers into two different groups. Efforts were made to balance the group's physical, mental and social talents. Neither group was aware of the other group's existence at the initial stage of the experiment. The 22 boys were picked up by buses on successive days in the summer of 1954 and transported to a Boy Scout Camp of America located in Roberts Cave State Park, which is in Oklahoma. The scientists were both researchers as well as group counselors. So the study consisted of three phases. The first phase was called the in-group formation phase. In this phase, the members of each group got to know one another. Social norms developed, leadership and group structure emerged. At the camp, the groups were kept separate from each other and they were encouraged to bond as two individual groups rather than a single group of 22 boys. Bonding was facilitated through the pursuit of common goals that required cooperative discussion, planning and execution. The boys developed an attachment to their group throughout the first week in camp and they quickly established their own cultures and group norms by doing various activities like hiking and swimming. The boys chose names for their group. One group was called the Eagles and another group was called the Rattlers and they marked their group name onto their shirts and flags. In phase two, the now formed groups came into contact with each other for the first times and here they competed in games and challenges and competed as well for the control of different parts of territory within the camp. Sharif arranged the competition stage where friction between the groups was to occur over the next several days. In this phase, it was intended to bring the two groups into competition with each other and conditions that were derived specifically to cause frustration between them. A series of competitions such as baseball, tug of war and swimming were arranged with a trophy being awarded on the basis of accumulated team score. So the team aspect is important here because it distinguishes individual contributions from the overall goal of the team winning. Members of the winning group each got prizes, for instance, multi-bladed pocket knives, and the losers got nothing. So it's either an all or nothing situation. You either win as a group and get a prize for yourself, or you lose as a group and there's no consolation prize. Allegedly, one group, the Rattlers, reaction to the informal announcement of a series of contests was absolute confidence in their victory. They spent all day talking about the contests and making improvements on the ball field, which they took over to such an extent that they spoke of putting a keep off sign there. In the end, they didn't keep the off sign, but they put their Rattler flag on the pitch to mark the territory. This is the Rattler's pitch. At this time, several Rattlers made threatening remarks about what they would do if anybody from the Eagles bothered their flag. Situations were also devised by the researchers where one group gained at the expense of the other. For instance, one group was delayed by the researchers in getting to a picnic, and when they had arrived, the other group had eaten their food probably also encouraged by the researchers to do so. At first, this prejudice against the other group, the out group, was only verbally expressed, such as taunting or name calling. As the competition wore on, however, this expression took a more direct route. The eagles burned the rattler's flag. 
So there was an escalation in hostilities between the two groups at this point. Following this, the next day, the Rattlers ransacked the Eagle's cabin, overturned beds, stole private property, and the groups became so aggressive with each other that the researchers had to physically separate them. During the subsequent two-day cooling-off period, the boys listed features of the two groups. They tended to characterize their own in-group in very favorable terms, and the other out-group in particularly unfavorable terms. So despite the boys coming from very similar backgrounds and, and having shared characteristics, the study clearly showed that conflict between groups can trigger prejudiced attitudes and discriminatory behavior, no matter how similar the members of two groups appear to be. This particular experiment confirmed Sharif's realistic conflict theory, which states that whenever there are two or more groups that are seeking the same limited resources, this will lead to conflict, negative stereotypes and beliefs. Eventual discrimination between the two groups will occur. So this leads us to the third and final phase of the experiment, which was labeled conflict resolution. So Sharif and colleagues tried various means to reduce the animosity and low-level violence between the groups. The Robbers Cave experiments showed that superordinate goals, goals so large that it requires more than one group to achieve the goal, reduce conflict significantly more effectively than strategies such as communication and contact. A number of improved reconciliatory opportunities such as the bean bag collecting contest or the showing of a film or the shooting of firecrackers to celebrate the 4th of July did not lead to any appreciable reduction in the tensions between the two groups. Sharif concluded that such contrived contact opportunities were not going to lessen the tensions between the two groups. So the researchers arranged for the introduction of a number of scenarios presenting these superordinate goals, goals that could only be completed by cooperative activity between the two groups. These goals were also such that they could not easily be ignored and the attainment of which was beyond the resources and efforts of one group alone. The researchers designed and placed these scenarios in a different location as they believed the new environment would inhibit the recollection of the grievances that might be primed by being in that initial location. So the first of these superordinate goal scenarios was called the drinking water problem and it involved their water supply, which had suddenly stopped flowing. All the drinking water in the camp came from a reservoir on the mountains north of the camp. The water supply had failed, and the camp staff, i.e. the researchers, blamed this on, quotations, vandals. Upon investigation of the extensive water lines by the eagles and rattlers as separate groups, they discovered that an outlet faucet had a sack stuffed into it. Almost all the boys gathered around the faucet to try and clear it, and suggestions from both members of the groups concerning effective ways to unblock the obstruction were thrown in from all sides simultaneously, which led to a cooperative effort, and they managed to loosen the sack from the faucet, and that lasted about 45 minutes. When the water finally started flowing again, there seemed to be some evidence that the superordinate goal achievement was beneficial for mending the tensions between the groups, as the Rattlers did not object to having the Eagles get ahead of them when they all got to drink, as the Eagles did not have canteens with them and were thirstier. The second superordinate goal was the problem of securing a movie, and here two films had been chosen in consultation with children's movie experts and brought to the camp along with other materials. In the afternoon, the boys were called together and the staff suggested the possibility of watching either Treasure Island or Kidnapped. Both groups yelled approval for these films, and after some discussion, one of the members of the Rattler group said, everybody that wants Treasure Island, raise their hands. The majority of the members in both groups approved to watching Treasure Island, even though there were a few dissensions on both sides, he would have preferred to watch the other movie. Then the staff announced that securing the film would cost $15, and the camp could not afford the whole sum. So after much discussion, it was suggested that both groups would pay three and a half dollars and the camp would pay the balance. This was accepted even though, as a couple of homesick eagles had gone home, the contribution per person per group was unequal. However, the goal of watching the movie superseded the perceived inequality and uh, inequity between the two groups. They got to watch the movie after all. Later that night, there were no objections for both groups to eat together. 
and previously there had been. There was some scuffling, but it involved fewer boys on both sides than were usually involved in such encounters. After several other superordinate goals were achieved by both groups, they began changing their seating arrangements and were considerably more mixed up insofar as group membership was concerned. So overall, this experiment provided some evidence to support the initial two hypotheses that Sharif and colleagues put forward. And the simplest explanation for this conflict is competition. You assign strangers to groups, throw the groups into competition where only one can achieve a positive outcome, create some tension artificially or naturally, and soon there will be conflict. The Robbers Cave study has been criticized on a number of issues, such as that the two groups of boys in the study were artificial, as was the competition and did not necessarily reflect real life and the fact that we shouldn't be quick to generalize these results to real life because the research only used 12 year old white middle class boys and excluded everybody else and that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any thoughts leave a comment otherwise drop a like and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and i'll catch you all next time